Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome back to my channel. I've had a couple of questions regarding specific things that you can do within Adobe Audition to help speed things up in your voiceover editing process. And one of those things was recording a favorite where you can set a specific rack preset and then perhaps maybe a normalization uh, you know, whatever chain of events that you perform on an audio file, you can actually set as what they call a preset or a favorite. And all you would have to do is just hit a button and that whole process is done for you. Instead of going through each thing individually, it's all done within one button. And that's what we're going to go through today. So let's get to it. So here we have an example audio file. What we're going to do first is to build a rack preset. Now, depending on what sort of plugins or effects that you use or have, this rack, of course, is going to vary. So I'm just going to use the examples that I have. But of course, you can use any of, you know, any of the different rack effects that you have and like. So first, let's build a rack preset. So what we're going to do first is add in any kind of noise removing effects that you have. So for me, I'm going to use, um, it also depends on what kind of noise it is. Right now, let's just focus on overall noise. Like if you have, you know, a computer fan or something going in the background or just ambient noise, we can use either, actually, I prefer to use NS1 Mono and start them start out pretty low, but depending on the amount of noise you have, you can go, I mean, I wouldn't go any more than maybe 40 if it was really, really bad. But NS1 is great, and I'm always talking about NS1, but NS1 is really great for removing lots of ambient noise. Uh, I'm trying to think of an example like... Um, I don't know if you can hear it, but there's a motorcycle going by right now. It would be great to reduce a lot of that kind of noise. Um, or if you have, let's say, for example, you edit podcasts and they're outdoors uh, recording this podcast and there's a lot of just wind and just ambient noise going on. NS1 would be great for removing that. Mr. Motorcycle Guy. Anywho. He's just going to keep doing drive-bys. Okay. But NS1 is great because it's not destructive to your vocal track. Adobe has their own noise, redu uh, noise reduction effect, which is really good. Uh, there's a denoise and then there's a noise reduction. Let me just show you that really quick. Adobe's noise reduction I would use for a specific sound, not ambient constant noise. I would use, it just keeps driving by. Although you could use it for constant noise, but it does do a little bit of destruction to your vocal track. I don't use it as much for ambient noise. I use NS1, but um, let's say, for example, Again, a podcast, someone is recording with another person and their computer makes a ding or something like that, or their phone gets a notification. This is good for removing that specific noise, but I wouldn't use Adobe's noise reduction for constant ambient noise. It almost sounds like a dirt bike. I think someone's got a new dirt bike in my neighborhood. I'm sorry if it's distorting I can't ask him to leave. I wish I could, but I can't. So, but NS1 would be good for just... constant ambient noise. Okay, he finally turned it off. So, let's start with that. With NS1 mono. And then next I'm going to go with a, maybe a mouth noise remover, which... I have a lot of, we're going to go to restoration, isotope. Uh, I'm going to plug in a mouth declick. 
This is my setting is at four and that's about it. It doesn't need a whole lot. And then I'm going to add a little bit of EQ. You could use, um, Adobe has a really great, um, why am I not saying, so? duh, parametric, parametric equalizer. This guy is really good if you have the time and patience to really find or fine tune your EQ. If you want to remove, you know, um, if you want just like a generic high pass or a low pass filter, those are there. So here's your generic high pass. You can change this to usually about 80 hertz is about typical. Tim Tippetts has a really great course on Adobe Audition, and he goes through this parametric equalizer at length. And I will put a link to his course in the description down below for you. If you really want to understand the science and technology, you want to get really techie and figure out the parametric equalizer, his course is really good for that. But if you want to add a little EQ, he's driving by. You want to add a little EQ, this is where you would do that. Or let's see what else we could put in here. If you have plosives, be a good one to remove. Isotope also has a great, uh, right there, deplosive. You can throw in a deplosive, get rid of those pops of air as they come out, reduce that. And then also, if you have a little bit of um, reverb or echo in your recording space, you also have through Isotope a de reverb, which has been a lifesaver for when I edit my podcasts. Let's just say this is your rack. You have all of these adjusted perfectly, so your track sounds amazing. You're very happy with the way that this sounds. You want to save this as a rack preset. You go up here to save effects rack as a preset. You click on that and you just name it whatever. Name ours test. So the idea is in your recording space, you're going to have the same amount of ambient noise. You're going to have the same amount of plosives. You're going to have the same amount of mouth noise. You're going to have, these are the core effects that you're going to use every time. So now these are all set in a rack for you. So anytime you record anything, all you need to do is to come into your effects rack, go to your presets drop down, and then just select your preset rack and then just hit apply. And then that is all done. So that will save you a ton of time on manually adjusting each file going forward. So that will help you there. And let's say that your typical, your typical chain is to apply your effects and then you normalize to negative 3 dB. So what we want to do is go up here to favorites and then we want to start recording favorite. Then we're gonna go to our resets. We're gonna select test. And then we're also gonna hit apply. Give it a second to apply. And then we're gonna come back up to favorites and go normalize to negative three dB. And that is our favorite. So now that we come down here and stop recording our favorite and we're gonna name it you know, every day, or we can call it new favorite. And another thing that Tim had given me the great idea to do is to date your favorite. Because if things change, you get a new computer system, you get a new microphone, you, you know, you improve your recording space. If anything changes, that's going to change the sound of your vocal tracks from day to day to day then you want to keep track of all of your different favorites or when you change them or update them. Or I guess you could simply go in and just delete the old one and create a new one. But it's up to you. But if you date these, then you have an idea of, you know, the last time that you changed it. We're going to save that. And then now I'm going to go back to, in history, I'm going to go back to when I very first opened this file. And now we're going to go to favorites and we're going to hit our new favorite that we dated for today. And there it goes. 
It's applying our effects rack and it normalized. So everything is done for you easy peasy, lemon squeezy. So that is how you create a effects rack preset and how you create a new one-click favorite. So these two things will save you a lot of time in your editing process. So that is it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. As always, leave me a comment below if you like what you see. If you have a specific question, throw me a like, hit that subscribe button. That really helps. I really appreciate it. And I look forward to seeing you on the next video. Thanks so much. We'll see you. Bye.